Hello, Goodwin here. I heard you guys like YouTube videos, so I thought I would just make this video and post it here and, and you can you can see it. You must be surprised to, to see me in this video, although you, you clicked on it. What I wanted to say was, I can do a video, a good video. I can watch it. I can watch the, the show. I can do a good job watching the show. I can do it to you, uh, for you. I can watch it for you. I can talk about the show. We can watch it together. Yeah, I'm good now. <clears throat> Let's just watch it. Chapter 13, The Firebending Masters, finally. You might want to take a couple steps back. What happened? What was that? What's going on? Has something about his personality changed his ability to firebend? Zuko typically is a very passionate person. He's someone who lets his emotions run wild. Is that somehow connected to his firebending ability? Maybe it's the altitude. Yeah, could be. How embarrassing as a teacher, though. I guess they're gonna teach each other firebending. <sighs> Just breathe and... That one kind of felt hot. Don't patronize me! <laughs> you know what it's supposed to look like! Sorry, Sifu Hotman. And stop calling me that! <laughs> he just doesn't drop the Hotman thing. Oh no, Saga's gonna rub hey, it in. jerks! Mind if I watch you two jerks do your jerk bending? Get out of here! <laughs> okay, take it easy. I was just kidding around. I remember that in the dream episode, they were talking about Aang learning firebending, and what did he call it? He called it the worst bending or terrible bending, something like that. He has a grudge against firebending, for obvious reasons. But he's laying it on a little thick here. He's coming to rub it in. Listen, everybody. I've got some pretty bad news. I'm talking about my firebending. It's gone. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just laughing at the irony. I had many, many discussions in the comments yesterday about whether or not their treatment of Zuko is justified. And I think I'd like to clarify a few points. When I said that Katara crossed the line, and when I talked about the group kind of taking on some negative or evil traits, I didn't mean to say that I don't understand them. I definitely can sympathize with why they're like that. But I think that there's a difference between understanding how someone is a certain way or why they're a certain way and condoning it outright. Like, I completely get why they don't trust him. I mean, from their perspective, he's done terrible things to them and he's, been hunt he's hunted them relentlessly. But I think in some ways there are still areas in which they cross the line. And now, just my gut feeling based on just a couple seconds of this scene, but it seems like they are just being mean. It seems like there's a little bit of schadenfreude. Schadenfreude? I don't know how to speak German. They're taking glee in his misery, even though there's no practical purpose for that. It's just, uh, it just seems like a grudge. I understand why they have a grudge. That being said, I don't like the grudge. I think it's not something that is useful or practical or healthy for this moment. She just seems like a hater, kind of. Maybe you're just not as good as you think you are. See? That's such Ouch. a mean thing to say. Tough likes that, though. <laughs> Maybe your firebending comes from rage. So, all we need to do is make Zuko angry. <laughs> Any excuse? I don't want to rely on hate and anger anymore. Hmm. There has to be another way. You're gonna need to learn to draw your firebending from a different source. I recommend the original source. Wow, there's a lot going on. I thought it was gonna be a cool training episode between Zuko and Aang, but this is about Zuko learning firebending. I also like the Toph's giving advice because if anyone knows about bending from the source, it would be Toph. For earthbending, the original benders were badger moles. One day when I was little, I ran away and hid in a cave. Oh wow, we get top backstory too. That's where I met them. <laughs> Great big badger moles. <laughs> uh, I'll never get those songs out of my head. The original airbenders were the sky bison. Mm, Maybe you can one. give me a lesson sometime, buddy. Well, this doesn't help me. The original firebenders were the dragons, and they're extinct. Oh wow. Either I find a new way to firebend, or the Avatar has to find a new teacher. I like how they're they're essentially learning it together, it seems. Also, I think it's great that Zuko has the humility to accept that he's not an expert at it. I think a lot of people in that situation would double down on it. They would pretend like the crappy firebending that he did was how the way you're supposed to firebend. I feel like a lot of people wouldn't be able to admit that, like, oh no, like I'm actually I don't know how to do this anymore. Especially when you have the whole group like waiting for you to fail so they can poke fun at you. It maybe seems like such a small thing in the show, but for me it's such a big thing because I think so many people, they try to artificially bring the world down instead of bringing themselves up. Like, maybe they're not actually that good at something, but they really want to believe that they are, or they really want to believe they know things. The appeal of that is that you don't need to do anything else. It's like, well, I'm already perfect the way I am. But then when you're confronted with evidence that actually maybe there's something you don't know, or maybe you're not that good, 
it's much easier to destroy that evidence than it is to admit that you're not as good and, and, and to actually start to improve. There's a humility that Zuko shows that's so often lacking it when you talk to people about things. You know, accepting that you don't know everything, that you're not an expert at everything, that you have a long way to go, that you don't have all the answers. You know, it's like it's a really difficult thing to accept because, you know, you want to be seen as someone who who is great and can do all these things really well and, and has admirable gifts. It takes major guts to look at the group like that and say, like, I suck. I suck at firebending. I got to learn how to do this again. I can tell the fire sages temples are somehow descended from these. Okay, we learned something about architecture. Hopefully we'll learn something about firebending too. That'd be good. Cass can be a great teacher. Whoa! The trap? Oh, nice. The last great dragon was conquered long before I was born. By my uncle. But I thought your uncle was... I don't know... Good? He had a complicated past. That's for sure. Family tradition, I guess. Right. Those things do run in the family. Let's see if we can outsmart the Sunstone. You know, Zuko, I don't care what everyone else says about you. You're pretty smart. Yeah, I was waiting for him to get that. Oops. I mean, he's not dumb. Why would the group say that about him? That's so mean. I don't know why I'm getting so defensive about Zuko. You can say so many things about Zuko. You can say he's angsty, moody, depressing to be around, awkward, misguided, bad at love, daddy's boy, mama's boy, mean, failure, ugly, but he's not stupid. This is something called the dancing dragon. Well, we do know Aang likes to dance. I want you to dance with me. What? <laughs> That's cute. Just do it. I think this is some kind of sun warrior firebending form. Dude, Hooray! Don't touch it! Why not? I'm just very suspicious of giant glowing gems sitting on pedestals. Someone's seen Indiana Jones. Oh! Help! Who are you yelling to? I feel like there's somebody here. Well, probably. what do you think we should do? Think about our place in the universe? Uncle Iroh has taught you well. Yeah. So Who's down there? Here to steal Sun Warrior treasures. I know my people have distorted the ways of firebending to be fueled by anger and rage. But now I want to learn the true way. I am truly humbled to be in your presence. Please, teach us. Wow. Zuko's showing a lot of humility this episode, just over and over again. It's a repeated theme recently, I think, in this season with showing humility in order to learn from a master, which is really cool. I really, really like that. Humility is, is great. It's underrated it's under focused on if you wish to learn the ways of the sun you must learn them from the masters ran and shaw you must bring them a piece of the eternal flame are the masters going to be dragons maybe so, since this society has been able to survive secretly maybe there still are dragons i hope zuko gets a dragon that would be so cool this fire is the very first one it was given to man by the dragons Oh, it's the uh, flame of Prometheus. This ritual illustrates the essence of Sun Warrior philosophy. You must maintain a constant heat. The flame will go out if you make it too small. Make it too big. You might lose control. Interesting. It's like a little heartbeat. Fire is life, not just destruction. So cool. Zhang Zhang needs to come here and learn this too, because Zhang Zhang was all about how it's all destruction. But yeah, I think I said it at that time too, that fire definitely is life. I mean, fire is symbolic of the change of man, like the dawn of civilization. Fire is what Prometheus steals from the gods to share with, with mankind as a gift to civilization, as like the start of civilization. I think maybe in some ways, fire is like a very early symbol of what we would now use technology for. Mental consciousness expansion and growth and like progress. So of course fire has, has great traits. Your flame's gonna go out because it's too small. You're too timid. Give it more juice. But what if I can't control it? You can do it. I know you can. You're a talented kid. That was nice. Zuko's come such a long way. He just seems like he's transformed in so many ways that he actually has found like real inner strength and real inner goodness. I find that the more I find strength, the easier it is for me to have good virtues towards others. It's really difficult to be virtuous and good towards others and like have real kindness that isn't manipulative until I, I feel like there's something that I've come to peace with about myself because that kind of strips away a lot of uh, distrust and like competition and fear about others and ways other people could, could harm me. It's like the more robust your inner workings are, the more comfortable you can give to others. I've said before that you can only give from a place of strength. Maybe I shouldn't use the word only, but 
I think like the stronger you are, the easier it is to really to give that. Like if you know you are good, you find joy in telling other people that they are good. It's just something that, I don't know, I just find that that's true for me. Especially if you have an insecurity in a certain area. Like I said before, you wanna, you'd rather craft the external world to fit the reality you want, which is that you're great and no one's better than you. And if they are better than you, it's because of luck or like a fluke or, but if you know you're good, if you really feel like I'm good, then you can just, you have no worry about seeing other people as good and it's really easy to give that praise. So I feel like this is such a testament to Zuko's growth that he is humble, he can see that he has a lot to learn. He's willing to learn. He places himself at the feet of the masters and he's not competitive with Aang. He's lavish with his praises. He's willing to be on the same journey on not exactly equal, but near equal terms with his student, which takes a tremendous amount of inner confidence, you know, inner strength. I'm really liking this. It's interesting, this resembles Zuko's fighting theme a little bit. I guess it's like a fi fire music, fire style music. It's interesting that the firebending, at least it's, as it's portrayed in this episode, seems to be so reliant on pairs. Like, the dance they did was a pair dance. There are two bridges, there are two masters. It could be a design just because there's two people, there's Aang and Zuko, but I'm hoping there's more to it than that. I'm hoping there's something symbolic about there being a pair. Like, what's the connection between fire and duality? This is kind of a rough theory, but there's the duality of fire that it can both damage and also create, but let's see. What's happening? Oh no. Zuko, give me some of yours. No, just make your own. Stop cheating off me. Quit being stingy. <laughs> it's not the time for this. The dragons are coming. Stop fighting. Oh no. You lost the original flame. Uh oh. Yeah, I was right. Now you gotta face the dragons. Get in there. I never said that. <laughs> There's such good chemistry. Oh, here it comes. Any moment now, dinner for the masters. Quiet, Hobgob. What? Everyone's thinking it. Yeah, shut up, Hobgob. I never liked Hobgob from the beginning. I think we're supposed to do the dragon dance with them. What? What about this situation makes you think they want us to dance? Let's just try it. Wow, that's beautiful. I'm touched. So cool. I understand. I'm touched by that. Something about that was so beautiful. I don't know what exactly it was. I can't say that this is why I'm touched, and I can't say this is the full the full reading of it, but something that this made me think of. There are times when I feel like what I'm doing is a pure an open expression of spirit that you don't normally get to experience when you're kind of trapped in your day-to-day -day reality. I've had that experience a couple times where things just feel like they're they're flowing correctly. And so it's so beautiful seeing Zuko in sync with these dragons, these great spirits, which are not actually dragons, right? It's like a dance with life. Like you are just aligned. Purity of spirit, purity of action, strength of character, real living, like real human, feeling and pure emotion and, and pure joy or pure passion or whatever that is and so there are moments where you just do things exactly the right way where it's, it, it comes out and those moments are great i live for that so i feel very moved by seeing zuko and ang dance with the dragons my uncle iroh said he faced the last dragon and killed it iroh was the last outsider to face the masters they deemed him worthy and passed the secret on to him as well he huh. must have lied to protect them Wow. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm glad. I thought firebending was destruction, but now I know what it really is. It's energy and life. It's like the sun, but inside of you. Do you guys realize this? Yes. Well, our civilization is called the Sun Warriors. So yeah. Makes sense. For so many years, hunting you was my drive. I lost sight of my inner fire, but now I have a new drive. I have to help you defeat my father and restore balance to the world. I love that they're painting the duality. There's the duality, the two sides. Because it's destruction and energy. 
This is so beautiful to me because I sometimes feel like we live in a world where our passions are muted. It seems like there's an incentive for societies and communities to dampen the passions of others, to kind of make people toe the line. And it's understandable why that exists. It exists as a protective measure because fire can burn. Passion can become destructive. Ambition can be a negative force if taken too far. But that pushback can also go too far. You know, people are expected to toe the line. People are expected to not make waves, to not follow their heart, to not follow their passion, to not speak honestly. You know, it's for a lot of my life, especially adolescence, I felt like the the flame that I had for life wasn't acknowledged. I was like told either explicitly or implicitly that that was unhealthy, that I was setting myself up for failure, that I was going to burn out. But in hindsight, the times I listened to that was so much worse than the times I just let that that kind of that fire burn. There for sure were destructive moments. You know, there were definitely times where I went too far or led myself astray or did or did bad things as a result of like passion and ambition. But I think like I couldn't live without like having some kind of fire burning, having some kind of drive, some kind of passion for what I'm doing or for the future or some willpower that doesn't allow me to just accept what other people give me or tell me where I should be or how I should think, etc. And I think for some, especially for people who don't have any fire, that's threatening because they're the ones who, who might get burned by that. But I love the idea of being true to your fire, you know, being true to your, your passion, your energy, your, your creative spirit, while just being aware of, you know, not letting it burn too hot. It's such a nice thing. There's so much there. And Ira knew all of this, of course, because Ira's just the man. And got it too. Beautiful. Now that you have learned the secrets, we have no choice but to imprison you here forever. Oops. Just, just kidding. kidding. <laughs> Good one. But seriously, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Fair enough. Zuko and I will be unstoppable. Look at him go. Yeah, that's a great dance you two learned there. It's not a dance. It's a firebending form. I'm getting annoyed. It's a sacred form that happens to be thousands of years old. Oh, yeah? What's your little form called? What is wrong with them? I'm getting, like, super pissed. See? People want to dampen your flame. People want to bring down your energy. It's threatening. This is not healthy. I don't care how much you like Katara or Sokka or how much you understand why they're like this. This is wrong. They're being just haters. They're not adding anything constructive. They're bringing things down, and practically speaking, this needs to happen for Aang. So what's their problem? The dancing dragon. <laughs> Ugh. Long story short, haters gonna hate. I think that's what I was getting at. <laughs> this is just them hating. Negative ending to the episode aside, that was great. That completely exceeded my expectations. I thought it would be... You know, Zuko teaching Aang something and Aang learns some lessons with Zuko and they get along really well and they find some commonalities. This was both of them on a journey of self-discovery. And I feel like I've made a self-discovery from the dragons. Great lessons, beautiful sequences. That dragon dance sequence was fantastic. It's so good. It's so good. Next is probably a two-parter, so I'll see you then.